Okay. I uh, I had heard from a number of people in the Jonesport area the bad part of the story, the tragedy of death and so on, and disappointment. And then one day in Jonesport, back in 1943, I met Tressa Rogers Kelly, and she was 88 years old, but when she was here with her family, the Rogers family, she was a teenager, and the teenagers had a different story than a lot of the other people did, and she, she told me a wonderful story. Fortunately, I kept my notes of that interview and in 1948, Israel established. 25 years later, I was in Bangor, Maine and I opened the Bangor Daily News and here was an article that was written by another of those children back here in 1866, okay? And he was saying, in regard to that 25 year anniversary of modern Israel, he said, how happy our parents and grandparents would be to read today's newspaper because that's why they went over to encourage the return of the Jewish people and the reestablishment of the state of Israel. And that, I just, I, I've got my notes out. 25, 20, 30 years. Later. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, I kept my notes. And uh, it started my research that led to the writing of the forerunners and then of course the encouragement from the manager or the director of um, the Museum Haaretz to have it translated into Hebrew. By that time I had somebody to really help and uh, it was published as Hanakshanim, the forerunners in America Anakshanim here. Both of those sold out. So now there are, we have new new editions of both. Printed in 1971, I started bringing groups of people to Israel. I was interested, and that was even before that 1973 article. Okay? In 1973, I brought a group of people. In 1981, this lady came with a group, and I've known her for a long time, and uh, she fell in love with the whole idea the history. She looked around and saw and she saw how sad I was about the uh, wooden houses that had been bulldozed. And it happened every time I came. I'd find another one burning up out in back here. And she said to me, at the end of the trip, Reed, you need to draw up a plan for saving the colony. And I said, go ahead. And she did, and she took it to the city offices to Cheech, Lahat, and the engineering department. Cheech became excited and supported us in our whole venture. And uh, we, oh, it just, the first thing you know, one of the local uh, men who has just built that new unit there 
got in touch with her. He had just purchased the Captain Ashley Norton house that was falling apart and said to her, uh, would you, could you bring a carpenter, could you get a carpenter you know and have him put this house back together again? He just purchased it. And she said, how soon do I need to let you know? And he said, tomorrow? 24 hours. 24 hours. Or the bulldozers will come. <laughs> well, she had somebody working with her doing that kind of work. And so she got in touch with him, uh, Mark Haynes, a young man, not yet married, a real good carpenter. And would he be available? Yes, he would. And so she got back in touch with uh, Sokolowski. And uh, Mark came over, brought another carpenter with him. And when they finished putting the thing back together again, it was awarded the prize by... It's the Israel uh, Presidential Prize for Preservation. Very nice. For that one. For that and, and how you find uh, evidence here, wood evidence, from your relative in this house? Of this house? Yes. Well, for one thing, it has to do with people from Maine. For instance, the lumber came from Whitneyville and was transported to the port nine miles away by a new steamship, or a steam engine, railroad, train. And the engine was built by a family by the name of Holmes, and the railroad went from Whitneyville to Machias Port, which had been established by a family by the name of Holmes, and that was Machias Bay and Holmes Bay. And uh, the historic house in, in Machias that people visit to see the early history was built by a guy by the name of Holmes <laughs> for somebody else. And Holmes's have been in that main situation since the beginning, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So what about Wentworth? And Wentworth? Okay. My great-grandfather fell in love with a lady on the coast of Maine and went down to they used to, to, to get their supply of fish for the winter, so on. And he went down with her. They had moved up north in Maine. And, well, his name was Wentworth Holmes. And my cousin was Mark Wentworth. also a great-grandson of Wentworth Holmes. And Wentworth Holmes, first name Wentworth, came from his mother, like my name, Reed, came from my mother, Reed Holmes. And her name was Wentworth. I mean, <laughs> the family... So what's the connection to this house? The connection to this house is that it was the Mark Wentworth family that uh, brought, the, brought the house with them on board the ship. And where do you find the wood with the name? And the ceiling of that room right up there, when the lath and plaster, when we were fixing it, you know, when we had the carpet.